Hello everyone, I am Li Xinyuan, a Huawei instructor. Next, we'll begin section 9. Now let's discuss how to configure our WLAN security. In previous courses, we covered the configuration of FAT APs. In configuring FAT APs, we mentioned security templates. Here, we will go into detail on how to configure security templates. We'll explain what the parameters mean and how to set them up. First, if you want to configure, you need to create a security profile name, which is the security template. We need a name. After configuring the name of the security template, we can then enter this security template. Once inside the security template, if we wish our Wi-Fi or our WLAN network to be unguarded, then we can choose security open. In open mode, users do not need any authentication to connect and their data transmission will not be encrypted. This method is indeed very convenient, but its security is a concern, so this method is rarely used. Of course, if within a certain range, everyone is trustworthy, then we could use this open strategy. Now let's look at the second security strategy, WEP. Similarly, before creating, we first establish a security template, then our security policy is WEP shared key. After configuring the shared key, we need to set some parameters. First is the WEP key parameter, then the sequence number of the key, the authentication methods in between, and then passphrase and hex. What does this mean? Passphrase refers to the key phrase, which is what we call the password. While hex means hexadecimal, we usually choose the passphrase option. Then what follows is the password we need to configure. This is the shared key security policy, WEP. Next, let's look at the third type, WPA slash WPA2 PSK. This authentication is the most commonly used today. Usually in larger enterprises or in our home routers, we use the WPA slash WPA2 PSK policy. The previous configurations are the same. Let's look at the parameters we can set. First, you can set WPA slash WPA2, or both for compatibility, of course. For compatibility, generally, we choose this option. The second one is PSK, which stands for pre-shared key. If using the PSK method afterward, we can still choose a passphrase or hexadecimal. Usually, we choose the former, then followed by the password we set for users. Then comes our data transmission, the encryption method of this data, to avoid being intercepted by hackers. So we need to encrypt the data. We have three methods, AES, TKIP, or both combined. Usually we choose both combined. This type of authentication is generally used in smaller networks or in home routers more often. If we are a very large enterprise and our security requirements are high, then we have another type called PPSK authentication, private PSK. Let's see why it's called PPSK. Let's look at the configuration. First, the security template. I won't elaborate further. Then among these options, we can pick one. Generally, we choose these two. Moving forward, here comes the important part. Here we have PPSK user. That is, if we use PPSK, different users, if we want, can be assigned different passwords different users with different passwords, to authenticate on our device, to access the internet through our device. That's what we call private PSK. Let's see how to configure it. Firstly, the keyword is EPSK user. That is, we differentiate users here. Then set a password using passphrase, then set a password. This key value is our password. And if we want, we can also give this password's user a username, if not a username. The system will randomly assign a name. If you set a username, make sure it is not repeated. Then you can also bind to a user group and also bind to the user's VLAN. Next is the expiration time, expiration date, and expiration hour. If we do not set it, it will default to December 31st, 2099, which is the end of this century. That's a long time, isn't it? Then this max device, as the name suggests, is the number of users allowed to log in simultaneously. How many users can log in at most using this password? Then this branch group is the branch group. Following that is MAC address, meaning we can also bind the user's MAC address. 
Finally, the last one is the SSID we use to access. Users search this SSID to connect. Then with the specific password, they can log in. So this is our PPSK, commonly used by large companies. Let's see, in a network, if we are using PSK or PPSK simultaneously, how should we go about setting it up? Let's look at this topology. This topology is like this, a company. We divide it into the R&D department and the finance department for the finance department. Our security requirements are relatively high, but not as high as the R&D department. What does the R&D department require? It requires one password per person for authentication. That is, each person can only use your own password for authentication. So everything each person does on our network will have a unique record. We can know all the operations of our users. Let's take a look. This is our planning. The first SSID is finance. For our finance security policy, use WPA2 plus PSK plus AES. The password is finance at 123. The second one is RD, research department here. Our difference is using PPSK. Different people use different passwords. Suppose there are two employees. Then we have one password one, another password two. Below, let's look at how it is specifically configured. First, the finance department. In the finance department, not everyone uses a separate password. So we use WPA2 PSK. Focusing on the PSK, after setting the password, log out, then the second security template. This is the first security template. We use finance as the first security template. The name of the second security template is employee which corresponds to our R&D department, we see here our authentication method has changed to PPSK. So with PPSK, we can set different passwords for different users. For example, the first user here, we directly used one user, then used PSK. And our password is set to Huawei at 123. Note here, max device is one, meaning at the same time, only one person can use this password to log into our device and our SSID is RD. So if a second user also wants to log on to our network, what do we do? How about that? Our second user also connects to the RD SSID, but they must use a different password because the first password is already in use. So if the second person wants to log in, they use the second password. Thus, each password can only be used by one person, which enhances the security of our R&D network. After setting this security template, we need to put the security template into the VAP template. Enter the VAP template and then bind the security profile, then enter another VAP template and bind another security profile. Once these settings are done, the setup is complete. After the setup, we can see here, our authentication method has become PPSK. The R&D department's authentication method is PPSK. That concludes this section. The focus is for everyone to understand. The security challenges our WLAN faces because our WLAN is a wireless system. Unlike wired systems, where you need a physical connection to connect, in wireless systems, some attack behaviors become much harder to defend against. So, if we have the opportunity to deploy these networks in the future, everyone must pay close attention to security issues. Here we also talked about security configurations. Typically in our configurations, the security strategies we use usually include these types, open WEP as well as WPA and WPA2. Then we have PSK and PPSK. Everyone needs to know what they mean and how to configure them. In the next class, I will give everyone a detailed explanation of how the entire WLAN equipment is configured, how to complete the configuration from data planning, ultimately allowing our terminals to receive the signal. To talk about how to configure, our configuration includes CLY configuration and web interface configuration. We will explain these separately later. See you in the next class. Thank you, everyone.